answer and stuff like that. And some I believe he did, and some I got my doubts about. But I, if, if there's one one person I know that's a candidate for it, he is. Because uh, he's doing right, putting the Lord first and honoring God. He's not sitting around feeling sorry for himself. He's doing the right thing, ain't he? And buddy, he's a, right, he's a good candidate for a healing. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Well, that's good, brother. Let's open the Bible to Proverbs chapter 17. And let's do a little Bible study here tonight. I want you to help me. And uh, we'll study here just for a few minutes this evening. I don't know about you, but I've had a good day. Enjoyed the Lord today, trying to get ready for tonight. And listen to some good preaching about CD. Brother Tim made me on about Dr. Jack Howells and listen to some on the radio. And uh, so I got to hear two or three sermons today or parts of sermons and uh, enjoyed it. And I like to hear preaching. Preaching helps me. And um, you ought to get some preaching. I look up Dr. Harold Seitler, who's done dead and gone. And uh, look it up, all that stuff he's got on there about Baptist distinctives and things like that. Uh, we had him preach that message for us one time up in Marion and done a great job and a lot of great classic sermons like that that every Christian needs to be familiar with. This modern generation of preachers, something's missing, something's missing. And we need to have the old time. I'm not saying we should be stuck in the 80s, but I'm just saying... Uh, as far as the power of God and the preaching and the Word of God and all that, we're stuck in the 1600s, amen? You ain't going to improve on this book right here. Proverbs 17, 17. Look at this verse here. Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. That first part, a friend loveth at all times. You know, I'm going to talk about being a friend tonight. And they say if you can, when you, when you die, if you've got five real friends, you've done well in this world. Now, I, I, that sounds awful. That sounds, you say, Brother Danny, I've got hundreds of friends. No, you, you don't even know who your friends are till you go through a terrible, terrible tragedy in your life when it's expensive to be your friend and not beneficial. Uh, you don't know who your real friends are. Your trouble in your life will bring out your true friends. Uh, somebody said, friend is somebody who runs in when the whole world runs out. A friend is somebody who won't forsake you in a jam. I, I've been in jams in my life before, and t- uh, crises and things, and I'll get calls from certain people every single time. And I know, you know what? There's my friends. And I got some. I got some friends. I got a lot, really. I I don't have as many as I used to think I did. I know there I had a preacher, all preachers used to tell me, they said, oh, Brother Danny, I'm glad you're my friend. I'm glad I'm your friend. And uh, then when I had problems in my life, uh, they just went the other way and started talking bad about me. And I called a couple of them. And I said, man, what's, what's the deal here? And he said, uh, well, I'm still your friend. I just, you know, I mean, five years, and you ain't spoke a word to me. What kind of friend's that? And uh, uh, he said, oh, I'm your friend, Brother Danny. Uh, that's not a friend. That's not a friend. Friend don't forsake you in a jam. Remember that. A friend don't forsake you in a jam. You get sick in the hospital, you'll find out who your real friends are. They'll show up. Uh, the, uh, there's, there was preachers, when I could help them and push them up the, quote, spiritual ladder, uh, oh, they thought the sun rose and set in me. But then when it became a liability to be my friend instead of an asset, uh, they went the other way. That's not a real friend. A real friend is somebody that's with you when you're up and with you when you're down and with you when you're hot and with you when you're cold. They don't always agree with you. They sure don't always go along with everything you do or say, but they're there for you. That's a friend. That's a friend. Now, I'd like to encourage every one of us here tonight to try to be a real friend. A lot of times, most of your real friends will be those that you go to church with and in your church family because they're the ones that's going to be there for you one of these days when the bottom falls out. And I'm going to prophesy. We're talking about the gifts of the Spirit. I'm fixing to prophesy. Everybody in here, the bottom is going to fall out. If you live long enough, the bottom's going to fall out. There'll be a tragedy strike your home and your family if you live long enough. Now, if the Lord comes before then, praise God, you got out good. 
But if the Lord don't come, a tragedy will hit every family in this room and eventually every individual. It could be a heart attack, cancer, a death of a child, an early death of a parent, uh, some kind of a car accident, house burned down. Uh, I mean, there will be some kind of tragedy for a man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. A girl called me one time, a church member, and she said, Brother Danny, what does that verse mean? Your man's born under trouble as sparks fly upward. I said, well, think about it. If you build a fire, which way the sparks fly? Up. If you build another fire, which way the sparks fly? Up. If you build another fire, every fire you build, the wind might blow them a little bit, but when it's calm, the sparks are going up. That's how sure you're going to have trouble. Man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. In that Bible, some kind of book, who would think of something like that? Man is born into trouble as the sparks fly upward. Sparks don't fly down, brother. They fly up. Now let's talk about being a friend. Uh, you know who your friends are when you get that layoff slip and you need help. You know who your friends are when you worked all day and you're tired and you're aggravated. That's when you know if I know who your friends are. You know where your friends are when you feel like nobody understands. You need a friend when you're rejected by your family or your co-workers. You need a friend when you fail. You need a friend when you're hurt. And you need a friend when you're sick. Um, I, I'll, I'll say a few things about it this, this, this evening and you're, you're welcome to help me. Let me tell you the advantage of a friend relationship. Friend relationship is different than every other relationship. Like me and my sister, we are, that, that's a different kind of relationship. We're, we're blood related. Uh, it, you and your spouse, it's, it's, you're, you're tied together spiritually and legally. Uh, your friends, uh, there's Brother John, are you alive? So a tree didn't fall on you? I bet you wish that did fall on that truck, didn't you? He's been trying to get rid of that thing. Was everything all right down that direction? Amen. Amen. Uh, do what? Give us a report. My goodness. Isn't that something? Man, the wind didn't even blow up my house. Really? Wow. Uh, but let me, let me say something about the a brother-sister relationship. There's a parent-child relationship. There's a co-worker relationship. There's a husband-wife relationship. But the friendship relationship is different. And the reason it is, is that it is one of the few relationships that we choose. You go to work there, you play. You don't choose your boss. You don't choose your family. You can choose your friends. You're stuck with your family. Amen? Mama, daddy, brother, sister, you didn't choose them. You're stuck with them. You've heard the old saying, you can pick your friends and you can pick your enemies, but you can't wipe your friends on the couch. Uh, it's supposed to be you can pick your friends and you can pick your nose and da 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 uh, but you can pick your friends, but you can't. You don't choose your family. You don't choose your family. You, do cho you don't choose your family, but you do choose your friend. So when you choose me to be your friend, or I choose you and say I'm your friend, it's an honor to me, and it's an honor to you. If somebody says, "Hey, buddy, I'm your friend. I'll be there for you. I can count on you." You're a rich man. Do y'all realize that there are people every day that die and that they they don't have no family? and don't have no friends, and, and the city gets them, and they don't even know what to do with them. And they just take them like New York and these places and just cremate them. And nobody even knows they're dead. Their family's off in another state. I mean, it happens all the time, every single day. There's people die. And somebody says, I feel there's a dead man laying out there on the sidewalk. And I guess they call the, the city, and somebody goes, and they just pick them up and cremate them and, and throw their ashes you know, in the, in the incinerator, and that's the end of them. Not a friend, not a friend. There's people in rest homes. They said there's a, 
They said there's a man, a preacher went to visit this rest home and he, and he went to this rest home and he seen this room in there and it looked like the man was, was uh, asleep. And the nurse said, would you please go in there and visit that man, please? He said, I'll be glad to. And she walked in there and he said, I'm sorry, he's asleep. She said, no, he's not asleep, he's dying. He said, he's breathing his last few breaths. So he went in there and kneeled down and that man was laying there in the bed. Looked like he's dead, but he's still breathing. And it had a sign over his bed and said, so-and-so, so-and-so, 71 years old, no friends. No friends. They don't know who to call when he died. They didn't even know who to call. When that man died, there was nobody to call. They said, nobody ever come and seen him. We don't know of one friend that he's got in this world. And the preacher bent over and said, hey, buddy, uh, Jesus loves you and everything. And he said, his eyes opened like that. And he said, Jesus is my friend. And that's it. I mean, my, listen, you may not have a, y'all, you may not think you got a friend in the world, but if you got the Lord, you've got a friend. Amen. I have a friend, oh, such a friend. Glory to God, hallelujah. I'm glad, I'm glad during the dark hours of the night you know, at two o'clock in the morning and you can't call nobody, it's too late and you're, and you're crying, you can look up and say, boy, he's my friend. He's my friend. Ain't you glad of that? Yeah, really, that's a blessing. I'd rather have him as my friend than anybody, but it's a blessing to have a real friend. Now, the friendship relationship is an unselfish relationship. In most relationships, there's a righteous selfishness. In the back of your mind, you expect something in return. But when I choose to be your friend, I choose to give, to love, to care, and don't ask nothing back. If we meet up here and we go visiting one night and we go visit some people, we come back and say, hey man, let me buy you a hamburger. There's no motive. There's no, well, I'm doing this so you'll do something for me. You just do it as a friend. That's a neat kind of a relationship. That's good. You know, if it's at work, somebody takes the boss out to you, yeah, I know what they're up to. And if it's a husband and wife, oh, he's trying to make up for coming in late the other night. You know, there's always some kind of, uh, you know, ulterior motive you think about. But a friend relationship, you can do something for your friend and not worry about anything in return. Like, like the secret sisters. I don't know what the secret sisters, all that they do, but I, I think that it's a wonderful thing for these ladies just to be a friend to somebody and them not even know where it's coming. That's a, that's a neat thing, it really, because it gives you a chance just to do something nice for somebody once in a while. And Christians need to do that. We don't, you don't get no glory. You don't say, I'm giving you this. You know, just, I just want to be a blessing to somebody. Just want to be a blessing to somebody. Uh, the friendship is one of the few relationships to which you can operate like that out of unselfishness. Something else. It can be a relationship for life. Friendships can be a relationship forever, not temporary, like somebody you know in college or somebody you'll never see again. Your friend can be a friend from now on. Even your mom or dad are not going to be here with you forever, but your friends, if they're near your age, will probably be your friend from now on. Not only that, a, relation, a friend relationship does not have to be accepted by the other person. Uh, it's not based on their acceptance. You can be a friend to somebody whether they like you or not. To become a husband depends on the acceptance of the wife. But I can be your friend whether you accept me or not. The next thing is you never, listen to this, you never have to give up one friend to get another friend. That's a, that's a neat relationship. It ain't like that with your wife or your husband. You can't say, well, honey, uh, I want another one. They'll say, what are you talking about? Well, I want you. I just want another one too. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Me and me only. That's the way it works. That's the way God wants it to. That's the way she wants it to. And he wants it to. But see, a friend, I can be his friend and his friend and her friend and your friend. And it's all all right. You can have a bunch of them and be a bunch of them. That's, that's the advantage of the friend relationship. Let me give you another one. Um, it can be completely spiritual. Friends, friendship's not physical, like husband and wife relationship. Or like uh, business, like husband or boss and employee. It can be completely spiritual. The only thing you talk about to, with your, that friend can be the Bible and the Lord and getting down and praying together. Uh, 
you know, just like us right here, we all come from different backgrounds, you know, and, and different, some of us like different things, but we meet here every Sunday morning, Sunday night, because we all love one thing. We love the Bible and the Spirit of the Lord, and we got that in common, and that's enough, man, for us to fellowship over. That's enough. I mean, we go to camp and stay a week with each other. Some of these adults go and, and everything. Boy, I tell you, we have, a, we have a time, and our friendship is spiritual. It's not financial. It's not physical. It's spiritual. That's a great, great relationship. Not only that, a friendship can be chosen at any time. Parenthood comes at birth. Marriage comes at the wedding. But as a man who wants to be a friend, you can pick a friend anytime you want to. Happy is the man who has a friend. Happy is the man that is a friend. Happiness and the happiest is the man who has a friend and is a friend. Say that again. Happy is the man who has a friend. Happier is the man who is a friend. And happiest is the man who is a friend and has a friend. That's right. Amen? Most people are never a friend, and most people never have a real friend. And you say, well, how do you find, how do you find friends? I'll tell you that in a little bit. It's, it's easy to find friends. You be a friend. You be a friend. The man that hath friends must show himself friendly. You be a friend, you'll have a friend. Somebody said, I went out to find a friend and could not find one there. I went out to be a friend and friends were everywhere. I never forgot that when I read it. You remember it. I went out to find a friend and could not find one there. I went out to be a friend and friends were everywhere. You know, the story goes, they said the woman jumped off a bridge and committed suicide. And once she jumped out, you know, and everybody was all standing around, you know, and everything. And, and, uh, and the man said, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, that's awful, that's awful. And the little boy said, Daddy, why'd she jump in the river? He said, well, she didn't have no friends, son. And he said, well, well she ain't gonna find none in the river. <laughs> it's true, ain't it? <laughs> ain't that right? You ain't gonna find no friends in the river, man. Uh, uh, she went out and been a friend. And, and friends were everywhere. You know, I've seen, I've, I've been in a lot of funeral services and I hate them, most of them. I'm, it's very seldom that you get in a funeral that, that you enjoy. I mean, it ain't something you enjoy, but once in a while, you know, and boy, you see people's friends show up. You see them show up. When we had Randy Kivitt's daddy's funeral uh, down there the other day in Charlotte, Randy, I mean, they packed that thing out. Dude. I've had two or three people say they saw me on TV. Somebody said, saw you on TV? Then I said, what was I doing on TV? Some hickory station, Randy had it on, and I was on there. Did anybody, did anybody, seen, has anybody ever seen this program? Channel 14 or 17 or something in hickory cable. Uh, but anyway, they're on down there, and I've had a couple of people tell me they saw me on TV. And uh, that funeral lasted a good two hours. And I, Oh, maybe over. It was like three or four preachers preached. It was had about eight or nine songs. I don't know how many testimonies, a video. I mean, people were shouting, coming to the altar, standing up saying glory to God, and it was good. And them funeral, you know them guys, them funeral directors, they was back there. They was about to die. You know, they, used, they like them 20 minutes. They like them 20 minutes. They was back there saying, God, never going to get home for supper. And they, and they almost didn't get that guy buried in daylight. It was dark. It was dark when they got to the, uh, the, the, the graveyard. <laughs> Can you imagine it being pitch dark and taking flashlights out there? Uh-uh, uh-uh. It was the way Lamar. <laughs> I mean, a big crowd of people walking out in the graveyard and it pitch dark uh, with a corpse. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. I heard about a preacher down in Florida. One time he's preaching his first funeral as, uh, as Ruckman talking about the judgment seat of Christ and how people's going to be ashamed. And he said, uh, this guy had on a white Panama suit. They wear them in Florida a lot because it's so warm, white, light clothing. And, and he said, it poured the rain, poured the rain that day and it was muddy. And the pastor was leading them all out through there like that with his little minister's manual and he slipped and fell in the grave <laughs> with that white suit on. And can you imagine... Can you imagine crawling out of there? 
I mean, everybody's, everybody's real somber and sober. I mean, you're at a man's funeral. I can't imagine. What would you do? I'd just slither on down the grass somewhere, get in my car and leave. Make like a tree and leaf, brother. I mean, I, I just, wouldn't you just disappear? He said, there's one pastor there's a, in a big old church they had a baptistry up here and he's getting ready to have a baptism and the pastor was, was back there changing clothes and he was just about, well, he's partially, I mean, just had his underwear and something. Somebody jerked the curtains open and there stood the pastor <laughs> up there like it and he, he goes like, yeah. And then he just dives in the baptistry. <laughs> Oh, that'd be rough, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be awful? That'd make you have dreams, nightmares and stuff. I've dreamed nightmares and stuff like that. You ever had them crazy dreams where you're at school or something and, and you, you forgot to put your pants on or something? That's, that's a nightmare, man. Uh, anyway, I don't know how, how'd I get off on all that? Oh, yeah. Uh, you'll find out who your friends are, brother. You do something like that, you'll find out who your friends are. Well... Let me say a few things about the friendship right quick. How to be a friend. Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. That's the best. He's the ultimate example of being a friend, the Lord Jesus Christ. He laid down his life, even for Judas Iscariot. Ladies, that means you can be somebody's friend whether they'll be yours or not. You can be nice to that old grouch at work whether she is back to you or not. You don't supposed to say, well, she's going to ask me. I'll just do it right back to her. I don't care. I'll give it right back. Uh-uh. That ain't a Christian attitude. Say amen right there. <laughs> don't bow your head. I'll tell you when it's time to pray. You can be somebody's friend. The Bible said don't return evil for evil, but return evil. I'm good. <laughs> Bust them in the head, amen. <laughs> no, you, uh, you re- return uh, good for evil, amen. It, it's uh, like I tell like at our basketball games. I heard Brother Mike got in the flesh the other night. No, he did. <laughs> no, I heard he did real good, but I heard somebody got in the flesh while I was going to Florida. Uh, but they said that the other team we played was really mouthing off and saying, acting not right. And stuff, and you know, when you're out there playing ball and stuff, and somebody does it, you want to give it right back to them. It's human nature. They push you, you want to push them. Last year, when we played basketball, I was real proud of our church. I think we only had one technical foul call on us the whole year. I will not tell you who it was on, it's none of your business. But I was right. I can tell you that. <laughs> now, I said something to the referee and he called a technical foul on me. Me, the pastor. I said, I'm going to smack him some bat. Uh, uh, but anyway, we're supposed to, I did go, I tried my best to talk to him. I said, I said, man, I, I, you know, I didn't mean to say anything to you. And I tried to say, and he wouldn't even be friendly to me, but I can be his friend. You can be their friend whether they be your friend or not. Amen? You can be their friend whether they be your friend or not. All right. Here's where you be a friend. You ready? First, I'll just read you these and we'll be done. Be concerned in being a friend. Don't be concerned about having friends. Be concerned about being one. Teenagers, get that. Teenage girls are the worst in the world. I don't have no friends. I don't have no friends. I'm not going to camp. I don't have none of my friends. I don't have no friends. Nobody likes me. Nobody. They're, you know why? Nobody can stand. You're, such, you're in love with yourself. Uh, you, you, you worry about too much. It's all about you. These little sweet 16ers on TV where the little rich girl gets a Porsche when she's 16, you know, to spend $185,000 on her. You know what them little brats need? They need to go out on bus route for a few weeks. That's what they need to do. And realize there's a whole world of teenagers that ain't spoiled like them. You you be concerned about being a friend instead of getting a friend. Many people would like to have a friend uh, who don't want to be a friend. It's better to be a friend than to have a friend. Uh, The world's philosophy is, 
I need to get all I can and be happy. The Christian's philosophy is, how much can we do for somebody else? And in the meantime, you get to be happy. The world's philosophy is get, get, get. I ain't going on bus ride. I'm playing golf on Saturday. I'm not going to give no money. I'm buying myself something. I'm not going to church. I want to watch football. It's what benefits me, me, me. That don't make you happy. The Christian says, God's been so good to me. We're going to live in heaven forever and ever and ever and never be sad. Let's get out here and try to make it happen for somebody else. And then in the meantime, he gets to be happy. That's the secret of life. That's the secret of life is giving and doing something for somebody else. I tell you what some of you people do. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you come out here Saturday morning and just go visiting with them. Just go. You say, I don't know how to win. You don't, you don't have to win them. You have to tell them. I, listen, our happiness isn't based on whether they accept it or not. It's based on us just doing what God told us to do. I don't base my my success on Sunday morning of how many people respond to my preaching. I, I always on am I, am I faithful in doing what God told me to do? Noah didn't have a lot of people respond. Great missionaries a lot of times didn't have a whole lot of people respond. It's, it's not, the, not the issue. The issue is being faithful to what God gave us to do. All right? Be concerned about being a friend. Now, start doing sacrificial things for others. Start doing sacrificial things for others. Others. Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. Let me think like others that I may be like thee. Let me think of others that I may be like thee. Others, Lord, yes, others. Let this my motto be. Let me do for others that I may be like thee. Get that philosophy in your head. Wonder if everybody in here tonight could think of somebody, an elderly person, a neighbor, a friend, that you could just do something nice for. Right out of clear blue. I've done stuff for people before. Uh, you know, like these guys that stand on the side of the road and they have a little sign there that said, need money. I don't always do it, but a lot of times I have. Now, you may think that's awful and everything. You do whatever God tells you to do. Sometimes I feel like God wants me to, to witness to them. And I'll stop and give them a dollar, a couple of dollars, something like that. And they say, thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir. And I say, look, I'm doing that for Jesus Christ, and he loves you. So the Lord gets the glory for that. That's why, that's why when the church gives money, that's why you don't take your tithes and give them to a family down the road that needs money. You don't do that. You give it to the church, then the church helps the family down the road, and the Lord will get the glory instead of you. We give it through the church. If I give it to somebody, I tell them, I'm doing this for Jesus Christ. If Jesus wasn't in my heart, I wouldn't give them guys time of day. But I always think, that could be my daddy. You say, well, they got their self in that mess. They sure did. They did. But I'm telling you, that could still be my daddy or your daddy. Uh, we got ourselves in the mess one time, and the Lord come where we was, folks. Amen. Be good to people. I'm not recommending that you women pick up hitchhikers or nothing, but... But I, 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 you know, but I tell you, help somebody. Help somebody in need. Help somebody in need. Help somebody. Just be good to somebody. Just be good. It don't take long just to be good to somebody once in a while. Just be good to them. I mean, you don't, just be a friend to somebody. You don't even have to give them money. Put your arm around them and say, man, I love you and I'm praying for you. And you hang in. That go a long ways to a lot of people. There's, there's old... Uh, uh, there's kids that come, uh, bus kids and stuff like that. Like that boy right there, meanest boy sitting in here right there behind Miss Vicky. See him? Is it hard for y'all to pick out the meanest boy in here? There he is. And once in a while, I'll just pat him on the shoulder and beat him up or something. Huh? <laughs> no, he's, he's all right when he's asleep. Uh, but, but you know what? And Della there too, and these, these young people, just tell them, that, hey man, I'm praying for you. Hang in there. You don't know. You don't know. They might be out there getting ready to do something terrible. And they'll remember, my Sunday school teacher told me she loved me and she's praying for me. You don't know. My daughter, Carrie, told me, 
she said she'd be at school or something like that and they'd be tempted to, they'd say, let's go somewhere, let's do this, do that. Somewhere she wasn't supposed to go or sneak off to the movies or something like that. And she'd say, I'd always hear daddy saying, no, don't you dare something. And she said, I could always hear. So what you say to these kids goes a long way with them. Be a friend to them. Uh, anybody want to say anything, help yourself. All right? Do sacrificial thing for others. The third thing is the need of a friend should be considered our need. If my friend has a need, I should consider I have a need. That makes it rough, but that is scriptural. That is scriptural. You say, well, I ain't my fault they got yourself in a mess. No, but the Bible says, weep with them that weep. Rejoice with them that rejoice. Amen? No one old Dax got saved here a few weeks ago. Boy, I wanted everybody to rejoice. And, and uh, 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 Alicia told me that, Mike, that Micah got saved like two weeks before that, didn't he? And he got saved and everything. We ought to make a big deal out of that. We ought, I think we ought to have them a party. You know, if, if, they, if they win something at school or get, get a trophy of, for sports, boy, we, I think we ought to do it when they get saved. I told Carrie, I said, you ought to have Dax a, a, a party and Say, praise God, Dax got saved. They make a big deal out when your kid when your kids get saved or somebody in your family gets saved, make it a point to do something. The same thing's true on the other hand. When their hearts broke and they're sitting over at the funeral home crying, go by. I, I've been pastoring since I was twenty three years old, and it amazes me how many people how many people get their feelings hurt and they'll say, they say Brother Danny. I was sick. I was out of church for three weeks. Not one person called me. Not one person visited me. My daddy died and nobody from the church came. Da, 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 da. And I know them 20 years and they never visited one person, never called one person, and never went to funeral home one time. Now you got to remember now, if you have friends, you must show yourself friendly. And starting tonight, starting tonight, every one of us in here, make it a point. If you hear about somebody in the church has a death, you might not can go. It might be in Lenore. It might be on the other side of Hickory. It might, but you got a telephone. You can call them and say, hey, I love you and I'm praying for you. Amen. And I know sometimes it's hard because we're so spread out. I ain't fussing at you. But I'm just saying, it, you want, you want it, when it comes your turn, you're going to want people. to. You know, you're going to say, well, I don't know about in the church. Even act like they care because you got to do it first. Um, same about Linda Howe. You know why? When Linda went home to be the Lord, man, you talk about a crowd. I, I couldn't believe the crowd of people that was in here. Now, my mom's funeral's big, but that's because it, it, me. I mean, I'm the pastor of the church. Linda's funeral, there was crowds of people here. And you know why Linda Howe had so many friends? Because she is friendly. She never met a stranger. That's what mom said. And uh, she, you know what? A man that has friends must show himself friendly. You can't be an old snob to people and then expect people to be nice to you. It just don't work like that. All right. The need of a friend should be considered my need. If I'm sitting over here in my house and I've got a good warm fire and I've got plenty of food piled up and I'm in there eating uh, biscuits and, and uh, gravy and eating ham and one of you's over here starving, your need should be my need. I'll take what I've got and share it with you. I understand you can't just give people everything because some people take advantage of it. I understand that. But if a man really got a need, then we ought to be a friend to him. All right, the next thing is um, feel like you're a member of that family. Feel like you're a member of their family. Everybody in the church... When they're going through a hard time, you should feel like you're a member of their family. Somebody in your immediate family dies, buddy, you're there. All right? One time, one time there's an old crippled man, and he dropped this notebook. He's sitting in a park bench and dropped the notebook. He dropped like that, and somebody came along and picked it up, and they got to looking, and they got to looking in it, and it said, for his body's sake, for his body's sake, the church. And here's what he wrote down. He had wrote down in their notes. He said this. He said, um, uh, these were out of Sunday school Sunday. This teenager wasn't there. 
Ask her about the sick baby. Leave fruit basket for the blind lady. Speak a word of cheer to the crippled lady. Invite the new family to church. Make someone feel better who you know had their feelings hurt. That's a pretty good idea. He kept a little journal and anybody in the church, you know, he made him a note. Be sure and you would say, send her a text. Uh, give her a call. Make sure you ask about the baby who's been sick. You see, sometimes we come to church, everybody's in here, fellowship and choir singing, and you forget all of that stuff. Make you a little note list, and when you get here, go to people. We, we fail at that so much. We fail at that so much. I've had people tell me, they say, Brother Danny, I was having all kinds of trouble. Nobody act like he didn't care. And I always smooth it over, and I say, well, brother, everybody's fighting their own battles, and everybody's got their plate full, and that's true, we do. But it don't take but just a second to walk across the aisle and say, how's the baby? Or is everything all right? You're going through a divorce, I'm praying for you. Don't take but just a second to do that. Instead of just, well, I heard, the I heard, did you hear? You know, uh, don't take just a second to be a friend. Anybody want to say something? I'm done. Let's, let's ask the Lord tonight. I'm going to ask him, will you say, Lord, help me to be a friend. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we do tonight ask you to help us to be a friend. You said a friend loveth at all times. You said a friend, uh, a man that hath friend must show himself friendly. Thank God you said there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I thank you for our church. Thank you for how you've blessed it over the easy years. I pray, Lord, that our greatest days will be ahead. I pray the Holy Ghost will be poured out on this place. Get us ready for the giant spring youth rally. Lord, God, do a miracle in such a mighty and powerful way like we've never seen before. Have you in our hearts and lives. Bless those that didn't get to come tonight. Lord, bless in their hearts. Those that are watching uh, by internet, I pray you bless them and help every one of us tonight to be a friend to somebody that needs it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. All right, listen. Um, we'll meet Saturday.